Welcome back to AFTV, everyone. Welcome to Talking Transfers. A big thank you for all the feedback last week. Really, really great to get all your thoughts. And it was a very well-received show. So big thank you to everyone who supported it. We are back and we are welcoming Curtis and Dan Potts for the show. Welcome to the both of you. There's been a lot of breaking news today. I'm going to get your thoughts and ask how you, how you both are. I think I know, gobsmacked and a bit confused, <laughs> as we all are. Um, but let's run you through that. Of course, we've got Robbie. We've always got Robbie here. Uh, but let's go through <laughs> the breaking news first. As we are recording this, loads of reports coming out that Arsenal want Kai Havertz from Chelsea and an official proposal has been made to Chelsea according to David Ornstein. And this is fascinating. The reports have been coming out. Big up to Alex Goldberg from the Byline podcast who called this back on Friday last week, said Rice and Havertz are the two priority targets for Arsenal. And this is moving along very quickly, according to David Ornstein. And it's an interesting one because Chelsea have to sell to the Premier League if they're to basically comply with FFP rules. We'll explore that in a little bit. Declan Rice, there is an official bid coming, according to David Ornstein. And lots of reports saying that we are closing in on a deal at around 100 million when you look at add-ons as well. So hopefully that will get done soon. The Castagna situation is interesting as well. A right back who's played left back, relegated with Leicester, of course, but a player who I think did fairly well in the Premier League and he's now available. Reports coming from Belgium that Arsenal are looking at him but want to get the Rice deal done first. Lavia as well is a target. There is interest. We will talk a little bit more about that later. And the bid could be coming for Caicedo once the Rice stuff is done as well. Very reliable journalists that cover Brighton saying that, look, a bid is coming. He's just on international duty, but he's very confident Arsenal will make a bid. William Saliba, since we last spoke to you, has agreed his deal as has Reese Nelson. Okay, let's talk about this man, Kai Havertz. Um, you both joined us on the AFTV Live. Go check out if you haven't seen it for a very instant reaction. But we're going to really get into the nuts and bolts of this now. Curtis, what, what's going on? I'll be honest, I'm in shock. You know, a lot of things that Arsenal do, like you think, wow, that, that's come out of nowhere. But this one just feels, it's hard to actually process. Like, on one hand, I'm like, wow, they're actually spending money. They're actually picking their top targets and going for them. But the whole Havertz thing just is a bit left field to me. Like he's, we've all said that we could do with another striker, a physical presence, and he is a striker. Well, kind of a striker. And he is 6'2". And he is 6'2". So yeah, he ticks them boxes, but I just think he's a little bit lightweight. I think he lacks aggression. He doesn't score enough goals. I think eight goals is his record in the Premier League at Chelsea. Um, and then on the other hand, like you said, it feels like we're feeding them financially to maybe try and get Caicedo or to go and buy like a top quality striker. So it's an interesting one because you look at the strikers with Arteta. I always said that strikers have kind of struggled under him. You look at Arba, you look at Laka, they don't seem to get big numbers under him. So I think he wants a striker that doesn't necessarily just stay in the box. He wants like a false nine mm -hmm. um, and Havertz has sort of played in that role for Chelsea, but just, again, I, I don't know, just this stigma of constantly going to Chelsea mm -hmm. and buying players from them. It's like, create your own situation and your own star. Because I think as a fan, you've already got a negative outlook of him before he's walked through the door. And that's not actually fair on him. Mm -hmm. um, so they're probably looking at it as they can get a bargain. As you said, Chelsea need money. They might be able to get him 40, 50 million. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to be running to, to print his yeah. name on my shirt. Let's go, sure. the, let's go through the, um, <laughs> really, not, not that luminous uh, no, no. highlighter oh, one no, no. with no, Havertz no. 29 on no, the back. No, no, no. We'll no. leave that one. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, I'm going to let you choose. Should we explore the negatives first or the positives first? Um... I don't know many positives, James, so shall we go to some negatives? Let's, let's go through the genuine concerns you have yeah, about this Yeah, there's deal. two big concerns for me. I think the first one is where's he play? I don't know what his position is. So we've seen him for two, three seasons now at Chelsea. He's great at Leverkusen from what we hear. But he was more of a number 10 or attacking midfielder. Since he's come to Chelsea, I don't know if he's played there, maybe he has a few times, but I've normally seen him on one of the wings or through the middle. So... I think he's got that profile where you, you know, you can hold the ball up and all that. I haven't really seen many of his strengths from that. I don't think he is a strong player from what I looked at anyway. Mm. The other concern is when people talk about flops in the Premier League in terms of the amount of money that's been spent, he's in that bracket. Mm. He's in the bracket with Pepe's, Sancho's, Anthony's now. This guy's in there because they spent, I think it was mad money. 70s. 
two to seven. Rising as well. Yeah. I mean, it didn't rise because he hadn't done anything, but it was supposed <laughs> to rise to about 80 or 85 or from what I was hearing, right? <laughs> so that won't rise now. But for me, I look at it and think this is a shock for me because we were linked, or a lot of Plex clubs have been linked with Mason Mount, right? We understand that Chelsea are going to be selling everybody. We get that. I'd rather be looking at Mason Mount for that sort of money, if I'm honest with you, because at least I know what I'm getting with Mount. I know where he plays. He's a workhorse. He'll definitely press, which is what Arteta wants. I don't see that those qualities from this guy. He doesn't press. He's been seen as quite lazy. I don't think he can get about the pitch like people believe he can. What are people seeing in this guy? Okay, That's my we, biggest question, man. Should we try to explore the positives, Robbie? The only, the only positive I can sort of um, pick up, because I kind of agree with what we're both saying. I just don't see the need for Kai Havertz at this moment in time. Well, not as a player that is a priority. I, I understand why it must be, it's kind of circumstances why Arsenal are moving for him, because they know the problems that Chelsea are in. Can they get this tied up before that deadline comes in? where, you know, Chelsea would be desperate to sell some of their um, big players and their high earners. But, yeah, I just don't... I'm, I'm with uh, these guys. I, I don't see too many positives. The only thing I keep saying to myself is Real Madrid wanted him. City were interested. Bayern, these are big clubs. Why would they be interested in him? Maybe they knew we'd then come in. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> let's, let's make that. Arsenal yeah, buy him. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Yeah. That is sometimes an indicator that, like... This quality. This. His quality. And then they're looking at him and thinking, oh, actually, it's Chelsea's fault. He's actually a good player. I don't know, but... Let me try and yeah, attempt yeah. some mental gymnastics here. Because it is, because I actually agree with all of you. I, I can't sit here and pretend that I'm like, this is the player I wanted or this is the player I'm particularly excited about. But let's try some mental gymnastics. He's, you say he doesn't know where, you don't know where he plays. I agree. Let's turn that sentence into... He's he versatile. Play, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he can't play anywhere. Yeah. No, he, he, yeah, he, he can play, play everywhere, everywhere so a little yeah. bit. <laughs> you, you, yeah, mentioned, you mentioned the add-ons. I'll throw Champions League final goal in there. I said I was. I said it was gymnastics, guys. So help me out. Um, I think. I think. I think. I think. Is that it? Mm, I think Arteta. Now, yeah. <laughs> okay, this is this is actually a genuine point. Three years ago, all of Europe wanted it and Chelsea got him. So does a player fall off that much? And when Chelsea in these last three years were a legitimately good side, winning a Champions League and expected to chance for the title, which for actually four months of the 21-22 season, they actually did and they were top for a long time. Havertz was a key part of that Chelsea team under Tuchel that had to work hard, that had to press, that had to defend well. So, and he's always picked for the German national team as well, albeit they've not been particularly great recently. There's clearly, there is, like you said, there's clearly something there. I just don't know what in this Arsenal team, he, I don't think he's depth for Saka, he's nothing like Saka. Yeah, he's left-footed and can play wide, but he's nothing like him. You say Erdegaard, but then Fabio Vieira, what, we're saying after one season that we've wasted 35 million on him. Smith Rowe's staying, so that's strange. Could he play the Xhaka role? But, Xhaka defends a lot. Yeah. He drops really deep into a midfield two to help defend. I, 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 th I think it's going to be that role. Do you? May, maybe it's Declan Rice who picks up all the dirty work calm behind oh, that. Good and, luck, and, Declan. And, You're going to have you know, a job. One man um, midfield yeah. with Zinchenko <laughs> inverting. And... Do, do, do you think that it's like, I, I reckon they've looked at a situation and thought, it's, if it costs 45 million, it's a bit of a bargain in their mind. If you think that Fabio mm. Vieira costs 35 million, relatively unknown, Havertz got a big profile, he's won the Champions League, he's 24, he fits the profile, he's versatile as well. They yeah, might so, be I mean, that's sometimes, how they're like, uh, sometimes with transfers, it's about getting a bargain, getting a deal for a top quality player just going for cheap, you know what I mean? So, you mm. you know, also looking at the situation at Chelsea, Chelsea are an absolute mess at the moment. You know, their owner messed up their whole transfer policy. There's players there that you can go and pick off. I was shocked when I saw City being linked with Kovacic. Mm. I'm like, why would Chelsea want to sell? But again, they they've got to. to get rid of some of these players. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. so, so, also probably looking to take advantage of the situation. I would be absolutely shocked if Arsenal paying anywhere near 75 million. Oh, yeah. I don't even think Arsenal will pay 50 million. I think it would, they'd probably go under that. It's a proposal at the moment, remember? Mm. It's not a done deal. Arsenal are interested. They put a proposal in. 
we don't know what that proposal is. If we give you that, will you give us the player? The player, you know, obviously wants to come. And then it's down to Chelsea. Um, the, the, the so, thought, it is, it, you know, if, you, if you're doing sound transfer business and you can get value in the market for a player like Havertz and you're in the Champions League, he's got experience playing in that. The false nine thing is interesting. You made such a great point. He's never really wanted his striker to just be a, a goal scorer and focal point, really. He's always wanted that interchange. I mean, Lacazette, the poor guy, you know, <laughs> look how many goals he scored now in France. OK, difference in league, but it was all about dropping in and, and holding up the ball and all that. Now, maybe he sees Havertz as someone who could play that role because he is like actually a midfielder slash number 10 converted striker who has kind of had a bit of experience and he can maybe work on him a little bit. I just, if that player that everyone was so excited about three years ago can get unlocked by Arteta, then of course 40, even 50 million will be a bargain. Mm. But he needed to show something at Chelsea. And in terms of what he has shown on a positive side, yeah, the Champions League goal. Cool. Listen, that was a cold finish. He went around the keeper, Sotti in Champions League final. Fair play to him. Um, the other thing is, I think some of the goals he scored, he showed quality. You know, we're watching some of his goals this season. You know, the, the, Not the, many the, of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> quick video. All four quick of them. video. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he's displayed quality, but I'm really stretching. I just think if you are looking at another profile of forward, or maybe not, maybe he's looking for exactly the same profile of forward, false mm. nine. I just, I'm, I really am surprised that this is the route. I think, I think personally, if we do get him, I, I kind of disagree with Robbie. I don't think he'll play in that track or I think he'll play across the front three when somebody, he'll fight for place across the front three and he'll look to be a different profile striker if Jesus is out. He's got the, the size and the presence and I do think that we've seen him play in, in a number of positions. Yes, size, if he guards out. Well, I, no, I don't think he does, yeah. to be fair. This is my problem. <clears throat> the attributes he should have, he's not proven at Chelsea. So well, the reasons that they bought him, he hasn't proven. He hasn't been a goal scorer. He hasn't really been their number 10 or their attacking eight. He hasn't been the number nine they wanted. He hasn't been able to do the things that we are believing he can do, which is hold the ball up, link up play, show presence, all of those kind of physical attributes. And I think that at the moment, if he's coming into this Arsenal setup, he doesn't get into the first team and he has to fight for his place, which is not a bad thing. But then when you look at it, you think, if Erdegaard and Jesus was to get injured, he would be able to slot in either of those positions mm. and do a job that Arteta believes he can do. It's for Arteta to get the best out of him and for the player himself to, to prove he's good enough. Man. Funny enough, you just mentioned a the player there <clears throat> in which you can draw sort of kind of parallels with in Martin Erdegaard in that he was a player who was, you know, highly, highly rated, has gone to places, hasn't really worked. Arsenal have bought him in and turned him into, you know, they knew the potential was there. Everybody, everybody knew the potential was there, but they'd just not seen it on a consistent basis. And now he's just got player of the season. Could Arsenal repeat the trick with, say, a Havertz? You know, tapping into that potential, playing him in his best position. And this is why I, I, I kind of understand why they're going in for him. But I bet you any money that proposal is nowhere near yeah. 75 million be. pounds. It shouldn't be. And for me, if we got Havertz, as long as we get our other main targets, I can mm. swallow that. If Havertz comes in and I see some of the big targets that we're miss looking at and we miss out on them, I'm going to be like, oh, I don't know, man. So mm. that, that's the only I, I think from a coaching point of view, Arteta is looking at him and he's thinking, I can unearth a gem there. Because yeah. let's be honest, Granit Xhaka looked finished and Arteta has turned him into a different player in a different yeah. role. Yeah. So he might be looking at him because I don't think any of us would question his talent. There's definitely talent there. It's about his production. Yeah. yeah, and I think if you're being uber hopeful and it's different because these two players went somewhere else before coming back and they did it somewhere else, but De Bruyne and Salah failed at Chelsea. Like, mm. I, I don't hold that against every player, but I think I just... You know, I think there's question marks. The new De Bruyne, there you go. Oh, we're, all, we're all wanting here, aren't we? So <laughs> these are the guns. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. We've, we've tried our best there, we haven't we? We've have really tried. tried. Positives, Let's man. hope he's not the new Marat. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. All right, everyone. Uh, and just a reminder, Tony, we didn't see the live earlier and why we mentioned FFP for Chelsea. They have to sell before the 30th of June. Two clubs win the Premier League to comply with FFP rules. The reason is the transfer window around Europe and other clubs doesn't open until the 1st of July, which means if they want to get deals on the books for this, uh, for this season, the 22-23 campaign, because of how much money they spent over the last six, over the last well 12 months, 600 million or so, they're saying um, they have to sell to within the Premier League.
to get that money on the book. So they are under pressure and hopefully, well, I say hopefully, if Arsenal are to do this deal, hopefully they get a good deal in that situation. All right, we're going to go to our ITK section where we're going to pick out some transfer new, some transfer rumours, players we've been linked with. And this time we're going to be asking our amazing panel, would you take them at Arsenal? Let's go through it now. All right, let's do it. Let's go through five players. And I'm asking Dan and Curtis, would you take them? Have a look at the screen. Three, two, one. It is in fact still Kai Havertz, as we were talking about him. It's a no from both. I think we've talked about Why? it in enough detail. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. No need to Strap in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Number two is. I think he's good. Okay. It's a no from Dan. Let's go to Dan first on why you wouldn't take Romeo Lavia. I, I like him. I do actually. Right. I do like the player. But um, I've seen Moses Caicedo and I want him. Fine. So I can't have him like coming in as well. For me, I want Caicedo and Rice and I've got my kind of heart set on that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying Lavia's a bad player. Man I was actually B. quite impressed. You know, mm. you know what uh, Edu mm. likes a plan B? Well, I think, I think there might be another plan B that won't be this guy, personally, mm. but we'll come into that if, it, if we right. mention it later. But what, about yeah. you, what about you guys? I would take him. I, I, I get Dan's point. Like, I want Kaiseido Rice. They're the top priorities. But I, I think he's a big, big talent. 19. He destroyed our midfield. Oh, he did, yeah. Um, good player. And like you said, player. we need plan B because you don't always get your plan A. I would actually take him. I, 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 I like him a lot, man. I think he's a very, very good player. I'm with you. I was, he was very, very impressive when he played against us. Yeah. If we can't get Caicedo, I think we should definitely try and get him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's a top, he's going to be a top player. Yeah. And he'd be a lot cheaper than Caicedo. Yeah, that's why I, I agree with all of that. All right. <coughs> the third player is? In fact, 100%. Oh, come on. Yeah. That's the one we all want, right? I mean. And, and let's explain why we brought him up again. It's because of what I mentioned at the start of the show that um, there are sort of reporters in and around Brighton saying that there is going to be a bid coming in. Uh, the same people who were saying back in January, Arsenal can keep bidding, he's not going anywhere. So they're saying that Brighton's stance has changed. And I think it's a very interesting Lepoy situation. Why is the Casado to Chelsea thing not progressing? I get you. The feeling, I think, is that he is waiting for Arsenal. Arsenal have said, well, I think, this is my interpretation of it, we're working on Rice, we'll come back, that's what some reporters are saying. And if they do, it's about whether Brighton do agree a deal. And I think if they do, I think I said it will come. But then if Chelsea blow them out of the water financially... I think mm. the reason they ain't progressed with Chelsea is because they've got to sell before they buy. That's my only reason. Because yeah, yeah. you've just mentioned about this financial fair play thing. Yeah. I think they'll have their targets, but I think they're looking at how they can raise the funds they need to not you know, yeah. comply with financial fair play and then they'll come in with him. I just think he'll go Chelsea. I, I don't know why. I just, I, don't know. I feel this is a Mudrick thing. We want him, we want him, we want him. Ah, oh, he's going to go because they're going to blow us out of the water. They're going to say 90 million bright and I know Arsenal can only afford 70. We can now afford 90. We'll give you 350k a week and he'll go, you ain't going Europe though, actually. Yeah, go on then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I don't think Chelsea are kind of in that situation no more to do that. I think they've got to I be a bit not. smarter in how they move now, right? Be, you know, because of the mess that they're in, they brought in a new manager in Pochettino. I think they're going to want to move smarter. In. I, I don't think they're just. I don't think you're going to see the Chelsea what you saw last in transfer the window. window, just splashing the cash for anybody and throwing. They've got a lot of players still. Even when they get rid of, or if they are able to get rid of those players, they got a lot of players, right? I think Arsenal. I can still see him going to Arsenal. I mean, you can never say never, but I can still see him going to Arsenal. I really can. I think um, Arsenal are a better proposition. They're in the Champions League. There's less problems around the place. And as I said, I just don't think Chelsea, I'm not saying they don't want him, but I don't think they're going to be able to come in with the crazy money mm. like what they did with Mudrick's eight-year deal. They don't be able to do that. Yeah, It's about going to come down... I, I, I Put it this way, I think the only way he doesn't come to Arsenal is if Arsenal don't want him. Mm. That's my opinion. I like that confidence. I, I have to say with him, I think he's outstanding. I think a few years ago, we made a massive mistake not buying Kante and buying Xhaka. I'm not saying that he's Angolo Kante, but I think for 21 years of point. age, his maturity on the ball, I mean, we yeah. saw it the other week, he played mm. it right back, he was the best player on the pitch. Yeah. You know, even the way he clattered Martinelli, I know as an Arsenal fan, we hate that, but the way he sort of saw Martinelli 
hurt Matoma and went and even high five Matoma. Like, I love that kind of nastiness about yeah, him I, as well. I, I agree. Do you know what I mean? I think if we don't get him, it's a massive mistake. I would actually break the bank to get him. Yeah, um, fair yeah. enough. I think if they put the right money up, they get him. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, I think he wants to come. Yeah. I think it's down to Arsenal on this one. Mm. If you see him going to Chelsea, I think that's because Arsenal weren't really seriously in for him. That's my opinion. Or we, were, or we just weren't prepared to pay that money. Or like we weren't Chelsea prepared were. to pay that. Yeah. In terms of his wages. And, 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 and also, I'm, I'm kind of with you, James. I think it, it kind of depends on the Declan Rice deal. How much Arsenal end up playing for Declan Rice. Do you think because we can get both? Do you think yeah. Arsenal I think would spend? We can. I, think I, think, we can. I think they have the ability to get both, but I think Arsenal, I mean, what I've been hearing is that Arsenal are not willing to pay £100 million for Declan Rice. They're not going to pay it. They're, they're, they're playing a little bit of a waiting game with, with the Declan Rice situation because they know Declan Rice wants to come. Yeah. Um, and they're saying at West Ham, well, we, we want him, he wants to come, but we ain't paying £100 million. You know, they're trying to get the price down. Now, if they can get the price down on Declan Rice, maybe that helps them in their bid for Caicedo. I mean, mm. I hope so anyway. Yeah. Mm. Imagine if we get those two, to oh, me, that's a statement of intent. 100%, man. It's unbelievable. unbelievable. You did give me PTSD, though, man, when you said about us getting being linked with Van Dyke and Kante and ended up with Mustafi and Chaka. <laughs> oh, right. I mean, yeah. that has, I'm hoping them God times have disappeared, done, man. man do you know what I mean? Jeez. Well, let's hope. All right. The fourth player, I'm really interested in what you both think of this player. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Curtis. Well, Curtis is always brutal, isn't he? Yeah, I don't mess around, man. You don't, you don't rate him at all? I call him Timothy Lasagna. <laughs> um, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> no, not for me, man. Come on. <laughs> like, I told you he's brutal, man. Bro, I'm t- listen. He's a bit of a mess. Do you know, do you know how long, you know how long I've been waiting to get back into the Champions League and hear that oh. music? No disrespect to it. I mean, listen, we played them earlier in the season. I think, was it Trossard nutmegged him for the Martinelli goal? Was it? Uh, 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 was it Cassano yeah, nutmegged? And I, I just, I think he's average, man. They've been relegated. He's 27. Mm. He's not particularly going to get that much better. Played at wing back a lot of the time at Atalanta. Yeah. I just this to me is like when we was finishing eighth right. and we needed squad depth. You know, is he that much better? Is he better than Tommy Asu and Ben White at right back? I don't even think he is. So what's the point in no, signing? He's not. Twenty million quid or twenty three million? They're asking for him. Yeah. For me, listen, I know he can play right back, left back, and all of that, but. Go for Cancelo or go for a, a real quality like Kaisido, fullback. Who can still, or even can, Ka- yeah, he can, he can play right, right back, back as well. That, that, that signing to me makes no sense. Dan? I, I can't disagree with anything Curtis has said. Look, he got player of the season for Leicester. That's the first thing. He got it ahead of James Madison. Right, so he's obviously had a good season. They went down, right? I don't, I don't want to start saying that we don't want any players that have been relegated because mm. I would take James Madison. We've mentioned some of the players at Southampton that we like, right? But I just don't think this one makes sense. Unless Kieran Tierney leaves and we need a left back and this guy's the guy, I just don't see that he'd be any use to us whatsoever. Now, it might be really harsh, but I think we can do a lot better. You know, yeah. you've mentioned names already that we can get on. A little bit like the Lavia thing, which is why I hit that. I actually like him and he would probably be my plan B, but I want Caicedo. It's like this guy, I don't really want him because I think we can do a lot better. Okay. So that's why I've hit the X, man. Yeah, I, I mean, just to come in on it quick, I, I'm honestly not just saying this because we've been linked. I've, I've always been... I always quite liked him whenever I've watched him for Leicester. He reminds me of like when we signed Cedric, and I, but 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 like a different level. If that, oh, I don't want him in, James. You're not selling this very no, well, James. <laughs> a bit of a Cedric turn in there. All oh, right, okay. Oh, I've heard it. I, I hear it. Oh, I got so in my eye. Okay, I hear it. What I mean by that is when we signed Cedric, but from the position we were in, I'm now levelling up. I. I just sort of, I didn't care, if that makes sense. I thought, cool, quite good for the team he was at, and I'm not expecting to be a first teamer. Like, I'm not that emotionally invested in it. If he signs, I won't be over the moon, uh, but I won't, like, hate the deal. I'm just a bit meh about it. If that it's sense. not worth Cecil dancing outside the Emirates, <laughs> is it? You know I mean? Pretty sweet, you wouldn't see Castagna at Man City, would you? No, no, no way, never man. in a million no words. No. But like Liverpool have signed players over the years. Either. When he first yeah, come, yeah, yeah, when I he first so. come to Leicester, he looked alright actually. Yeah. I'll give you that. He did. 
I ain't seen much since. 27, Belgium International, but he's gone down. I well, can't see him improve. The Cedric Regen isn't, isn't <laughs> selling it for everyone. Fair enough. And this guy. I watched your what video. It's the, it's the most shameless video Thank I've ever you. seen you do. <laughs> Thank and you're you so a very much. intelligent guy. Thank you. Thank so you. I was shell shocked. But do you know the interesting thing about this? And I'll give you this. And we were speaking about this off camera. For the position, you know, when we left Highbury and stuff like this to go to the Emirates, it's so that when people like him are on the market, Facts. we should be in the race. Facts. Because at the end of the day, the only way you're going to bridge the gap with Man City is doing something crazy that elevates you. Imagine him up front with Saka and Martinelli. Now, I know the wages and I know the transfer fee is not under, you know, they're saying, what, 150 million or something. Yeah. Uh, the only reason we probably can't is because of the ownership model, if we're being honest. So, he, he wouldn't come to us, but financially. So I'm going to cut you there, because that's going to be our part two of this show. We're going to explore whether Arsenal should be in for an Mbappe, even though my video is incredibly shameless. Um, so we'll get your thoughts. But to confirm, we would all obviously take him at the club. Of course. OK. Mate, all I'd right. sell the training ground to get Mbappe. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine. Let's, uh, let's go into it. Let's have the Mbappe chat. Okay, so Curtis alluded to my incredibly shameless video, five reasons why Kylian Mbappe should join Arsenal. Go have a look at it, it's a bit of fun. Um, I can muster about two decent reasons. But um, I think the bigger point is, look, people will laugh about it, but I think there's a very fair question. Why are Arsenal not in for Mbappe? Why are we, because you are so right. We moved to the Emirates to compete with the biggest clubs in the world for players, in competitions, whatever it might be. This is a guy we've spoken to before. He knows of Arsenal. He knows of our interest in him. And we did just challenge for a title. We do have the money. You know, if it's not, not if it's not now, because I think if you win, if you do what Liverpool have done for three, four years, you start winning major honours, then maybe you can start having those conversations a bit more, with a bit more hope you're actually going to get these players. But as shameless as my video was, a genuine question is, what do Arsenal have to do to even be a part of this conversation in a serious manner? They've got to win the, the two big trophies. You know, you're not getting Mbappe with FA Cups, Carabao Cups. You've got to win the Prem. You've got to win the Champions League because that elevates you back to that level. You know, even if financially we could afford it, he, he would see it as a risk at the moment. You know, he wants to go Madrid, which is seen as the pinnacle. Um, I'm sure if City felt they had room or whatever, they could make a move for him. You know, it's, it's doable. But I think we've got to get back on that worldwide platform you know when you know you've toured everywhere you know when we had Thierry's and those players there everybody it was mayhem around them players I think over the last 10 years that kind of hype around Arsenal has dropped I've always said that over the last decade we probably lost a, a generation of fans a lot of kids are choosing City and have chose Chelsea and because of the success success mm. brings brings fans so I think we've got to win those top two trophies and be back at that top table in the Champions League every year yeah. signing major players and then you've got a chance. Dan, when you see Mbappe sort of announcing or, or, or an announcement from some sources that he's going to be leaving or that PSG want to sell and he's not renewing his contract, all that, it, do you just kind of laugh it off and go, yeah, well, we know we're not in for him? Or is there a part of you that goes, oh, but like, you know, why? Why are we not? Yeah, <clears throat> I don't think there's part of me that says why not. I think we know why. I think the last 20 years have proven without a Premier League title and without a Champions League, this guy's not going to look at us. Now, I'm not going to say that he's not going to look at our project now and perhaps be a little bit more tempted than he would have been, but I think he wants to win now. He doesn't want to wait and grow with a team anymore. He's going to go Real Madrid and win trophies, in my opinion, now. Otherwise, it will be stay where he is because he's got a chance of winning the leagues and the Champions Leagues or Man City. I don't think Arsenal in that bracket. If he wanted to leave in four years' time and we look at, wow, Arsenal won three, three Premier Leagues, two Champions League, he might look at it then and Could go, be wow. 27, 28. Exactly. Yeah. He's going to look at that and go, this team are ready to win now. Arsenal aren't a team right now, in my opinion, that are ready to win right now. It's what we want to be, and I think that's what we have to be after <laughs> the summer window. That's the only thing that's going to tempt, uh, uh, you know, Kai Havertz. But, uh, Kai Havertz, Kylian Mbappe. <laughs> He's having nightmares about him already. Already, big already big man. Big difference, Kylian Havertz. Um, I know what I'll say lastly is I feel personally that the wage yeah. is 150 million, okay, apparently. Now we're paying 100 for Rice, so we've got the money to pay it. He's on 500k a week or whatever it is. We've not shown a model at Arsenal that's going to allow for him to be earning that sort of figure. And maybe one day we will. That's what I hope is that I think football's moving towards that. We're going to have to try and compete with these, these clubs. 
but this for me is a bit of a shame because I apparently was interested in speaking to us when he was 17. But look at what he's gone on to do now, man. We, we can't match that ambition for him right now. And I think he'll go and win trophies at Real Madrid. Yeah, probably. Listen, we got to get ourselves into a position that when players like Mbappe become available, we are one of the clubs they're thinking about. Obviously, he's, we're not at this moment in time. He's probably, like you said, probably a Real Madrid he'll, he'll end up going to. But we have to get ourselves into that position because we're a big enough club, big enough fan base, the money, the owners have it. If you actually look what they've done with the Denver Nuggets, they've got the best player in the NBA. Mm. In Jokic. Is that right? He's okay. the best player in the NBA. Biggest NBA. contract ever as well. Biggest contract. And also, if you look at their team, the LA Rams, yeah, they did um, when they won the Super Bowl, I think it was a similar thing. They had like two of the highest earning players yeah. in the NFL, right? Wow. So to me, we, you know, he's the best player in the world for me. Agreed. Kylian Mbappe. Yeah, yeah. If you bring in a player like Kylian Mbappe to Arsenal, the current Arsenal team, right, and say you've got here Declan Rice is on, like, obviously I know it's a lot of money, right? All of a sudden, you're challenging Man City. Well, we challenged them last year, but you're all of a sudden, when people at the start of the season, they're thinking, oh, well, it's like that. Maybe they'll get over the line City because of Pep. These are the type of players you need when you're going to win Premier Leagues, Champions Leagues, and I don't see no reason why, maybe not now, right now where we are, but within the next year, two years, these sort of players should be attract, we should be attracting these type of players to come to Arsenal. It's, because do, it's, do it's, it's, it's two, and it's twofold as well, is that even if you build superstars like Asaka, if you're not, again, functioning in, in that space, as a top club, he'll go because Saka yeah. will be the next sort of Mbappe type player. And, uh, you know, Real Madrid will come in for him. Yeah. So we've got to, you know, he's done it. Stan Kroenke's done it with the Denver Nuggets this season. He's done it with his ice hockey team, I think in Colorado Rapids. He's done it with the LA Rams by bringing in top, top players to add to what he's already got. And that's why they've won things. Yeah. Got to do that with Arsenal as well. W wouldn't it be yeah. nice even if he says, look, I appreciate it, I'm flattered, but it ain't going to be Arsenal. Wouldn't it just be nice for us to go, the yeah, is 150, yeah. now let's see if Mbappe yeah. wants to. But to us. me, he should I'd love to I see agree it. with that. I'd yeah. love to see yeah. that. Yeah. It, shouldn't even be a, yeah, it should be a thing that we are a consideration for him. So, you know, like, for instance, Man United have been mentioned in this. In, in this well, they ain't done nothing more I than agree. Nothing That's a great point. Well, but they've been he said he doesn't want them. Well, fair well, enough, but they're still through. in the conversation. Yeah, yeah. And when it was being mentioned, nobody said, why would he go to yeah, Man United? People say Man United is a consideration. So Arsenal should be a consideration, but we've got to really grow up here to attract these type of players. Because these are the type of players I want. Ossiman at the moment, we all know, oh. would be perfect to Arsenal. I know, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah but are we in that position where we are attractive enough to that player? I'm sure he knows, all these players know all about Arsenal, yeah. know all about the history, Thierry Henry, Invincible, they know all about that. But they, I still think the really, really big players like I think, yeah, but... Do you know what? Let's, I, I, let's I think, get ourselves in that position. I think the narrative at Arsenal has got to change this year. I, I keep saying the apprenticeship's done now. We can't keep talking yeah. about phase three, project you, follow that PR, because that's a safety. Young players, young When manager, Arsenal used to finish second, back when we were successful, that was seen as a disappointment, because mm -hmm. man, you had probably won the title, <clears throat> we were fuming. Obviously this year it's different, you know, we weren't expected, so it was seen as a bit of a, okay, it was progression, even though we faltered at the end. I think now they've got to say, no, we have to try and win the league. That's why I like the Declan Rice thing. Yeah. That's why, I like, you know, yeah. if we could get Declan Rice, Caicedo, to me, that's like statement Massive statement. Of statement, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So then the next phase after that has got to be players like him, yeah. Oshimane, that, that's to me. Yeah. But okay. I, I, I agree with what Curtis is saying there because 2002, 2003, I was in mourning coming out of the Highbury. I was a kid, mm. second. I couldn't even celebrate the Pires goal properly when we beat Southampton in the FA Cup because I was still thinking about it. That's what I want to get. We should all be like that. Yeah. We shouldn't be, what a season, second, come on. We should be, we bloody lost the league, man. We could have won it. That's yeah. what I used to. So why have we changed? We should be like that. We should be looking at players like that going, we've now won the league. Look at this. We can attract players like that now. 
and we ha- we aren't because of what's happened previously. And you've only got to look at Man City getting Haaland. Haaland is a player we couldn't have had a conversation about last year when he was on the move. Man City picked him up, but go back 10, 12 years ago or before the big takeover, they would never have been in that conversation. So there is, so, yeah, you yeah. can so make can, that jump. You can trophies, make that jump. Yeah. And what has he it. done? It's not just prestige and history. It's and not what's just the happened? Man United's, the Real Madrid's. You've yeah. got to, you can get there. You can what's get, happened, James, since he's come in? They won the treble. treble. They won everything. On to yeah. our next in level. one year. And that's what I'm saying. If you are going to get there and maintain it, that's why I look at, say, for instance, a Liverpool. Mm. When I saw Liverpool this season turn around and say, actually, we're not going to go for Bellingham, because the money, I thought, mm, that's not, if you're a Liverpool fan, that's not a good sign. Yeah. The, they know if they get Bellingham, what that does to their midfield. But now they're like, mm, I don't know, we'll leave Bellingham, cheaper option. I'm like, all of a sudden I'm thinking, how serious are you about chasing down Man City? Because if you're going to chase down Man City, you need Bellingham. Yeah. yeah. So... You know, but okay. Well, good chat. Let us know in the comments section what you all make of uh, well, look, the fact that Mbappe is on his way. But what Arsenal need to do to get to a position where you can be having these conversations? What you make of all the Kai Havertz stuff? I'm going to just everyone raise your hands if you take this window. Let's hit the wide screen and let's ask. Here's the window. You ready? Kylian Mbappe, Kai Havertz, Declan Rice, Caicedo. And Castagna. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord! Uh, you know, <laughs> Thank you! And they're, and they're trying to tell me they wouldn't take Castagna. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. We'll leave it there. Thanks for joining us on Talking Transfers. We'll be back Wednesday next week. See you very soon. Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.